welcome, good morning. Um, if you want to, stand up and sing along with us as we sing, sing Lay Me Down. Welcome to Maplewood United Methodist Church. We are so glad you are worshiping with us. So glad to see actual faces here <laughs> with us. Um, some of the things 
The signs and the placemats are just in a way to make it so you feel like you know where you're supposed to go and don't feel like you're the one that's sitting in the wrong place and everybody else knows the rules. That's just my experience of how to make people feel comfortable. We're glad that you're here. One of the things that we understand when you're here is that we all want to visit and talk. What we're going to encourage you to do, the ushers will release you at the end of the service. We encourage you, don't block doorways. <laughs> Don't, don't bunch up, pay attention. We're not going to police you, kick you out, or any of those things, but we're going to ask you to respect each other and not put someone in the position of feeling unsafe in that. And we, we're hoping that we can, as we slowly figure this out, we can reduce distances and still feel safe. That's part of this journey of just figuring this out, but um, just asking that continued place of, as we're family, how do we help each other feel safe comfortable and respected within this space as we journey that we have we'll figure out where we are <laughs> i hope you're as used to as i am that the world changes but two days from now it'll look completely different than it does right now and we'll have to keep adjusting for that so welcome glad you're here a couple things i want to lift up is that i'll be doing a training and since we don't have a secretary at this point the office will not be open on monday and tuesday because i will be in training on zoom um not on figuring out zoom but i think i've figured it out <laughs> A couple of things I want to lift up in kind of that sense of getting back to it. Some of this journey has been, yes, how do we keep having worship? But worship, there's parts of worship we can't recreate virtually, even if we do everything the exact same way and send it out there on the virtual world. So some of what I've tried to do throughout this time is to come up with different ways that we get some of the other things that we get from church, like connection to each other, a sense of being part of something bigger, and a chance to do an act of worship that we do as a person in our journey of choosing to follow Christ. So that's really where the bread of life, which you should have all gotten a sign up for that, for Monday Thursday is this piece of understanding that in some ways we just need to reach out and touch each other and this isn't a big visit it isn't you have to go tell them your life story you don't have to hear theirs it's a sign up and take a loaf of bread to whoever you sign up for so when you get that sign up you go and you put your name beside the people that you're willing to take a loaf of bread to here's the bar you can make it you can buy it it can be banana bread, it can be Hawaiian bread, it can be a loaf of white bread to make sandwiches. This is a touch point of us saying, I for Christ am going to go out and do an act of remembering that he has given us life. And that celebration of Maundy Thursday of the Last Supper. You can put a card in it that says that Jesus is the bread of life or you can just stick it on their door and run. It does. <laughs> the piece is us stepping out and doing an act of worship. And some of the goal is don't sign up for yourself. Let somebody else sign up to bring a loaf of bread to you. And if you don't know their address, you can call. I didn't publish everybody's address. We have it published in our directory, but you can also call me and I will get you their address. But let's do this act of worship that gives us a place where we can touch and actually feel that sense of making a difference for someone else. A couple of the other things that are happening, new studies are starting. Our Thursday morning Bible study group will be starting a new book um, on the study on the book of Acts on April 1st, so that if you've been thinking you wanted to and just haven't or haven't got back into it, that Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, um, we're going to be starting a new book so you don't have to come into the middle or the end of a study that's already started. We're also on our Sunday afternoons at 3.30, we're going to be starting a new book next week. So if you would like to join us at 3.30 on a Sunday afternoon, these are presently via Zoom. My rule with that is when the people that are there with me in Zoom say at least half of them are ready to come back, then we'll figure out the next step, which is how to have some in the building and some still on Zoom, and then we'll proceed from there. So um, that's kind of the rule of thumb, and at this point, the comfort level seems to be more with Zoom. 
The other is that we're in the process of trying to figure out how to do a community-wide Easter egg hunt. And so community-wide, think thousands, not tens. And so we need candy for that. Do you, wanna, do you want eggs? Do you want me to start collecting stuff like that? So if you want to buy some candy for that, the, always the trick with the plastic eggs is remember, think small, not big, because the small candy fits inside the egg and the big candy doesn't. So if, you're, if you want to buy some candy, bring it next Sunday, drop it off, or bring it and drop it off in the office. I think those are all the announcements I can think of this morning. <laughs> Time to move on. Will you join me in the invocation? As we gather, we call out to you, our God, who has brought us together as your hands and feet in this world. May the distance disappear as we join together in worship. By your Spirit, gather us in the circle of your love, so that no matter how far apart we are, we know the blessing of our connection. Let our worship reflect our love for you and the joy on our faces and the openness of our hearts, that we will be renewed and encouraged. Let us be like seeds scattered on good soil, that this time of uncertainty and distance will bear fruit for your kingdom, 10 times, 20 times, 100 times. In the name of Jesus Christ, we call out and invite you in. You said banana bread and now I'm hungry. Um, okay, our next two songs are newer songs to us, um, so feel free to listen, read the words on the screen or on your screen at home. Um, if you know it and you're here um, or at home, feel free to sing um, along.
next new song is called Captain. Thank you. I'm lifting up that Facebook this morning seems to be very choppy. We will, the videos that we post later will not be chopping, choppy and breaking up. But uh, as life has proven, we have no control over Facebook. So we're sorry. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else sitting in Fellowship Hall if they wanted to come over. There is still space here. Some of the pieces I do want to lift up is, again, I've been sharing that we have an app that's Maplewood United Methodist Church, and one of those places in the whole how do we continue some of the traditions that have been um, part of the congregation. One was sharing prayer concerns through prayer cards, and since we're not passing those, I'm inviting you to take out your phone, open the app, 
you can do two things with it. If you wanted to give a donation while you were here, while you're online, that you can give a donation through that app or our website for the services here. Um, but there's also a prayer wall, which is a place that you can post now or throughout the week. This is not a replacement for our prayer chain. This is just a replacement for the blue cards, which we used to pass around and collect um, as a way to share what's on our hearts and on our minds um, at this time. Emma Jean called me out of the blue this week and asked us to pray for her. Um, she didn't have really anything specific, just wanted prayer, so we keep her in our prayers. We do celebrate some of those places where there's been good news, and Alma is back with us. Saw her once. <laughs> Get used to new seats. And uh, joy that John is here with us too, and Gail is home, and Rich did okay. I also lift up to you this morning, I, I can't, from the minute I heard it, um, that Dr. Stothard had taken his life. It just breaks my heart. Um, I don't know anything you don't know, probably even less, <laughs> but it just hits me that that is one of the tolls of this year, of just how hard it has been for everyone that's been walking through it. Um, keep his family, keep his friends in your prayers. Also, as I heard this morning, we are marking exactly a year from when we started this journey. And the, one of the hardest parts about that for me is that 524,000 people have lost their lives. And as hard as any of this has been, we shouldn't forget families and friends who have lost somebody we shouldn't forget that their life has been completely altered in ways that are beyond whether they have to wear a mask or not. But I also have realized in this journey how important it is in these days to remember to stop and say, how are you? Not in the, hi, I'm fine <laughs> world, but in the Realizing that we're all walking through something that has taken a lot of energy and a lot of different emotions have been brought into it and we need to give each other time. So to keep them in prayer, I know that Peg and Bob's granddaughter had gone home, but it didn't necessarily sound like there was a complete answer there. I'm opening the app. I'm hoping... I found that I can't have it open because then I don't catch you. Okay? Those are the prayer concerns for this morning. Let us go into the spirit of prayer.
Holy God, this season of our exile, this time when everything we knew has been turned upside down, has hopefully taught us something, but has also led us, left us abundantly aware of those who have suffered, O oh God. And our hearts and our minds and our thoughts go out to them. But we call out to you, O oh God, also to help us to find a way to truly live your love into every corner of the world that we are in, so that the healing that comes after this struggle will indeed be real, that we will become stronger and more certain of your love in our lives and in the world in which we live, and that the world that we live in will be shaped by that love. For gracious God, we are indeed, as we gather here, both rejoicing at the blessings that we have received, the healing that has happened, the fact that we are able to still gather and overwhelmed, O oh God, by the places where people struggle, the loss that breaks hearts, and the things that are yet to be figured out. So help us, O oh God, be our guiding spirit. Show us the truth and help us to live into it. We ask this in the name of our Father, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For this next song, if you are here, um, I do invite you to stand and sing with us. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> Joy, you tell me this all the time. If you are here, you are invited to uh, stand and sing this next song with us. It's called What a Beautiful Name. You were the word at the beginning.
seated. I meant to say after the one, first one, you will never see me leading you in clapping because I can't clap on the beat. So feel free to clap all you want. I've always said that I liked going to Zimbabwe because they're all clapping on different beats, so I fit right in. Worked really well, but it doesn't do well for me to lead you in clapping on a song. But I think we celebrate with joy with any of them. Now the passage this morning that I'm reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. And one of the things is that a few weeks ago I attended a meeting and we were talking about the role of the church. And this was one of the passages we talked about. And there were a lot of new things that stood out to me. So I kind of wanted to share it with you. As soon as Jesus and his followers left the synagogue... They went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a fever, and the people told Jesus about her. So Jesus went to her bed, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began serving them. That evening, after the sun went down, the people brought to Jesus all who were sick and had demons in them. The whole town gathered at the door, Jesus healed many who had different kinds of sickness, and he forced many demons to leave people. But he would not allow the demons to speak, because they knew who he was. Early the next morning, while it was still dark, Jesus woke and left the house. He went to a lonely place where he prayed. Simon and his friends went to look for Jesus, and when they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus answered, We should go to other towns around here so I can preach there too. This is the reason I came. So we went everywhere in Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and forcing out demons. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. One of those pieces that we think we don't want church to change, we want it to stay the same and to never adjust, but it has adjusted many times, and I always think and kind of laugh at that passage in Paul where he says that women are supposed to be quiet in church because it's really that scenario where church has changed. They've moved away from it just being the Jewish faith and the Jewish practices that had always been in place, and there was this new church forming called the Christian movement. And There was this crazy thing. Women had proclaimed that the tomb was empty. Women had been following Christ and were counted among his disciples. And for the woman who didn't feed him but sat his feet and listened, he said she chose the better thing. And so in that movement, as all of these things are changing, the people look at Paul and say, so what should church look like? And I love it because his answer is, you know, like church. So it should look like it's always looked. The women should be in the back, the men up front talking about the scriptures. That's the way it's always been. So why would that change? How many of us today, when we think about church, say, what should church look like? Well, it should look like church. Like, it's always looked like it does today. And I think of all of those places in our journey where there was a time where we considered and said that playing a stringed instrument in the front of the church was a sin. Read scripture, there were strings instruments, loud clashing cymbals. And in case none of you knew it, that's a stringed instrument. It wouldn't make noise without the strings. (laughs) Worship and church has changed again and again and again. And the best and most faithful way to do that that I believe is, is that we go back to the scriptures to listen. Not to the do's and don'ts, but to what Jesus taught us about was the reason that we came together. In this passage, interestingly enough, if you look at it and say, what's going on? We have the disciples and we have the people, and they are very excited about Jesus healing them. 
It isn't, yes, they thought he spoke with authority in the synagogue, but they really like this kind of, you're caring for us. And he could have done that day after day, every single day. In fact, when he took a break from that because it was wearing him out, the disciples come, hey, come on back. Everybody wants it that way. And Jesus says into that, yeah, that's not really what I'm here for. Yes, he came to heal us, but he came to heal us in a whole different way, didn't he? And there's a difference between being able to heal a few thousand and being able to heal the whole world. And I think about this piece and I, I go back to the mother-in-law who's sick and how many of us just wish the people who have always taken care of us would just keep taking care of us so we don't have to worry about it. And how that puts everything back the way it's supposed to be. But the disciples are just beginning to learn what it means that they are following Christ. As we went into this pandemic, we had to rethink worship. And there's been a lot of, we just wanted to go back to the way it was. The struggle that I have was, we had gotten into the place where worship was about us. Did they play my favorite song? Did I like what the preacher said? Were the people there that I wanted to see? Did Jesus meet me there and make me feel good? But the struggle of worship, if we're paying attention, is that this time isn't about us. It's about God. And the shift that happens is this piece when I see Jesus steps away. Jesus had been there and he had been caring and healing and taking care of everyone until he was exhausted. And he stepped away to a quiet place to be with God. What if that were worship? A time that we step away to be present with God, to hear what he has to tell us, to hear where he is doing in the world, but even more, to thank him for all that he's done. And I look at Jesus in this passage, in that time away, that time of worship where he comes to God, isn't a, he doesn't come out and go, phew, now I'm renewed, let's go back and do it the same way we've always been doing it. He comes away from it and goes, now I'm clear again. My role, my purpose is to preach to all of the communities around here, to tell everyone that the kingdom of God is near. And that God calls us all to come closer. We are in a time where the world is changing, not just because of all of this virtual stuff. As many of us have learned is that how many of you grew up in a time where you didn't get to shop on Sunday because stores were closed? We're not going to go back to that. I, too, I had to stay home and what if we ran out of milk? We ran out of milk. The world has shifted, not just in the everybody's turned away from God, but even those that are good Christians that want to be in church are still missing church for kids' sports teams and grandkids' sports teams and college fo football and family trips. It's time to look and say, how do we truly worship as Jesus did? How do we see our time with Jesus not about us, but about what God is doing in the world? In this passage, we would like it. It was very comfortable if we just get to come and God makes us feel better. I don't know if you've read the book. There's a lot in there that doesn't make me feel good. There's a lot in there that challenges me to be a better person, to do the very things I'm the least comfortable doing, to stretch myself. 
And when you look at Jesus in this, wouldn't it have been nice if he could have just stayed there and everybody loved him and he healed person after person after person and he didn't have to go to the cross. So comfortable. But we, just like Jesus, have a purpose. If we're truly going to follow Christ, then we have to be willing to figure out how we stay faithful to that, not just do what's comfortable for us. And for me, in this time, it's been more clear as the important piece is, do you stop? Do you stop anywhere in your week and truly turn to God? Not ask Him for things, but truly stop and remember God loves us so much. And remember that he isn't there for us to do the things we want to do. But we are here to do the things he calls us to do. Jesus said he came to preach. Our call and what we accepted when we said, yes, I will follow Christ, wasn't, this will be what makes me feel good the rest of my life. Our yes to Christ was about truly following him and transforming the world that all would know that God loves them. That the world would be shaped by that love. It's not an easy thing to do. It's way easier as I find every year that I get older to stick with the way it's always been done. Yet just as Jesus found that if he just stayed there and did that for the rest of his time, it wouldn't transform the world. Every day I see just doing it the way I've always done it doesn't help me be the person that God has called me to be. So I want you to think about how are you letting worship be something that doesn't just heal you, but connects you to God in a way that you are ready to go and follow Christ into the world. Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, as by your spirit you have made us one, you are the courage we need. Help us to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we go into our closing song, just a reminder for those who are in uh, service today with us, the ushers will... Um, dismiss you by pews, um, so please wait for them to come and dismiss you. And let us remember, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Our closing song today is Good, Good Father. If you would like to stand, go ahead and stand. If you would like to just sit, that's fine too.
bless week.